and welcome to my speech. Uh, my name is Timo Arnio. I work for the National Land Survey of Finland and I'm going to talk about uh, Oskari software. Some of you might know it and some of you might not. So uh, I'm going to also introduce the basics and, and tell about a little bit about the specialties as well uh, that we have in our, our software. And, but the main point of this presentation is to uh, introduce you the, to the new things that we have developed over the uh, one year period after uh, the last Phosphor-G in Buenos Aires or actually online. And uh, well, there is one slide about what's next, but the main content will be about, about the recent developments in, in Oscari. Uh, let's get going. One more note. This is aim, aimed at end users and administrators users, so not so much for developers, but if you are a developer, thank you, <laughs> uh, you're welcome to join in the next presentation, which is given by my good colleague Sami Mackinen, and uh, it will be in, well, next, so 25 minutes or so. So please do stay here, do not go anywhere, and do invite all your friends. Uh, that's about it. Let's go to the introduction. So this is our kind of tagline, what we say on our web page, I think, still. So what Oscar is in short, or I don't know if that's short, but it's one sentence. So Oscar is, is a tool for easily building multipurpose web mapping applications utilizing distributed spatial data infrastructures. And what that means is that you can set up geoportals, kind of big services with a lot of data, a lot of map layers, and a lot of tools for analyzing and visualizing, and exploring, and publishing uh, spatial data. Uh, uh, you can also set up uh, web GIS services sort of for one use case. So you have just the data for that specific use case and just the tools you need for that specific use case, but still kind of a bigger, bigger service. And uh, last but not least, you can make uh, embedded maps from any, any Oscar instance and kind of publish maps and, and put them on your website. I will go into a bit more detail on the, on the next slides on, on each of these. And furthermore, there is something called RPC API or RPC integration you can use to kind of interact with the parent web page that you have where you put your embedded map or do your embedding. And there's a, an example I will be showing about that as well. Uh, Oscar is completely browser-based or the client is completely browser-based so you don't need to install anything, you just need a web browser and uh, platform independent, obviously, obviously because of that. Uh, we support most of the kind of relevant OGC services. Uh, I won't go through maybe all of these, but most of you know, <laughs> know these. And uh, we also support OGC API features, which is rather new still and still developing on. So that's kind of nice and neat. And we also support statistical data APIs, a couple of them actually and you can create some uh, thematic maps or statistical maps utilizing Oscari. I will have a slide on that as well, I think, later on. Uh, so what are kind of our specialties? Uh, what makes us a bit different from the competition, if you can use that word in Phosphor-G context? Uh, for example, GeoNode, MapStore, Mapbox, etc. Uh, Oscari has always been built uh, heavily on on the integration of existing services. So you have your kind of SDI, spatial data infrastructure behind. You have your services uh, all over the internet and you just register those services into your Oscar instance and kind of use those directly from the source. So you don't have to store in Oscar uh, your data unless you really want to or need to. What else? We support statistical APIs, like I said, and, and we have a nice tool for creating thematic maps. I have a Nice little slide about that, and a GIF or animation about that. Live demos were not allowed, so you're going to have to do with these animated pictures. Uh, Mapbox vector tiles, that's not so new anymore, but uh, other than the Mapbox vector tiles, we can also convert all uh, vector data sources uh, on the server side to Mapbox vector tiles for the client, so that makes uh, things nice and nice and fast for the end user. We do, do support web map service uh, with the time dimension, so you can create some animations and, and see kind of, well, time series data. There will, will be a nice uh, presentation on this by my colleague on Friday, I think, Sini Pöytaniemi, so check that out if you haven't yet 
and it will be given on Friday, so probably you haven't. Uh, we also support Web Visa Service uh, Transactional, I think it's called, so you can collect data and manage data as well. So kind of a little specialties that maybe not everyone has. And of course the embedded maps, I suppose everyone has those, but also the RPC API that I will be talking about more in a few slides. Uh, this is kind of a recap, because some people like more pictures than they like text. So what you have is Oscar sits in the center and you have your APIs or data bases, whatever, and APIs on top of those, like this, like so. And you, Oscar reads those interfaces and uh, even writes when you have user data, so you can upload data as well. And runs in your web browser, like I said. Uh, so what are the benefits of this running in your web browser? You don't have to install anything. When you get a new version, you don't have to install anything. You press Control R or you press F5 and that's it. Uh, you don't have to download the data, the whole data. You just download the kind of area you are browsing, exploring. You don't have to download it again when it updates. So you're just using the data directly from the source. Uh, API integrations, so it's not just data. You can do routing and other kind of things, um, feedback services, or integration to feedback services, Open311, etc. So a lot of nice things. And not just that, you can share your work. You can create map links, embedded maps, uh, print out maps if you like, PDFs, PNGs, stuff like that. Uh, and this is the kind of vanilla Oscari, what you get if you just take Oscari. Usually you customize it, so this is just a demo uh, presenting how it looks when you install it or d download it and, and set it up and, and running. So, well, my guesses were both wrong. Uh, last night when I was making the slides, I was trying to put some markers where my presentation might be, but it turns out we are not in either one of those, <laughs> those points. But we're here. That's good. And you're here, even better. Uh, but demo.oscari.org, you can check that out. If you have a laptop, you can try it with the phone, but there is a better option for the people with mobile devices coming up. Uh, embedded maps again. You can publish, like I mentioned, and embed your, your little map applications on any website. Uh, we have a better mobile support on the embedded maps or published maps. So if you are, have a mobile phone and you get bored, you can try demo.oscari.org slash example. It will be a very simple example, but at least it works in a mobile uh, rather nicely. Uh, when you're creating embedded maps with Oscar, you don't have to know anything about coding or developing. You just point and click. So there's a screenshot. Uh, you give a name to your map and uh, I opened up the tool selection here and you can see part of the tools, but go ahead and try it yourself. It's easier that way. A lot of things you can do. And these embedded maps, you can uh, further utilize with the RPC API. And uh, like I mentioned, you can interact with the parent web page. And here I have a nice demonstration of a Finnish service about phishing restrictions. And uh, it's a kind of looping animation, so let's see when it starts over. Like now, I'm zooming in there in a specific location, and as you can see on the left-hand pane, the data is updating, and this is outside of Oscar. It's the parent web page that's kind of continuously updating data as the user is browsing. And you can click on the map, or you can click on the left-hand side pane, and everything will work nicely. So. A lot of things you can do with it. You can listen to events, you can send requests, you can add, draw, style features, all that kind of things. And we have a nice example page kind of introducing those, those features. All right, halfway through and we get to the point of this presentation. So what's new since uh, Phosphor G 2021? Usually we release about four uh, releases per year. Uh, that those would be like main versions or major versions, whatever you want to call them. And last year we had four releases. That's good. And what is not so good, maybe we had six small bug fix <laughs> releases. But that's mostly thanks to Log4j and other kind of security things that you just have to patch 
as soon as they are found and reported. Uh, so far this year we've had three releases, and uh, January, March, June, pretty good, and most likely we will have two more releases, I think, this year, one or two. Let's see. And now the versions. The way I'm gonna uh, show this is that I always have a slide with the kind of biggest improvements in each release and then a couple of examples with, with these animations or pictures. So that's the format of the rest of this presentation. So uh, last year I was talking a lot about performance improvements that we made into Oscari and we continued those after the Phosphor G. So this was already released in October 2021. Uh, we removed the layer extent information that is, uh, or it, it's not sent to the client anymore when we sent the list of the layers that the current Oscar instance has. Uh, so for example, in, in the Finnish Geo portal, we have more than 2,000 layers, and, and you can imagine if you send all of the extent information for 2,000 layers, how much data that is. So now we only download it when you actually need it, so when you're using that data or, or map layer. Uh, WebMap tile services tile matrix data uh, is now converted to JSON. Uh, on server side, so again, you don't have to send the whole kind of get capabilities chunk of uh, XML to the to the server side, uh, <laughs> browser side. Sorry, so that makes things again a bit more fast, a bit faster. Uh, for admins, when you're adding new services or registering services, uh, the layers are now sorted, so you can have layers that are available, existing, or problematic. Available services are something, or map layers are something that you don't have yet registered in your Oscari. Existing is something that you have, and problematic are something that will probably not work. Of course, you are welcome to try, but probably the projection is not supported or something like that. Uh, style editor improvement, well, I will show this in an animation as well, if I remember right. And also 2.5 got these uh, hotfix or bugfix releases for the Log4j vulnerabilities. So this is a, another animation, and here I'm going to add a layer. I'm in the map layer admin tool. I want to do it fast, so I select an existing layer, and I click on add a new layer from the same service, so I don't have to type any URLs or anything like that. And here I'm browsing. These are all, all the available layers, and these with the green checkbox are already registered to this, and it tells you that this is already already there, but you can add it if you want. And a reason for that could be that you want to filter it and make a kind of subset of that data, for example. I think I have to go fast because I have a lot of things. Uh, style editor improvements. Uh, this is quite basic stuff, but we have made a nice uh, React-based um, style form or tool for styling data. And uh, here we added the option to actually have an empty fill <laughs> for, for polygons, which is rather nice sometimes. And s smaller fixes and smaller improvements as well to that, that uh, tool. Moving on, Oscar 2.6, January this year, uh, we introduced a new function, get ve vector features. This may be not so much for end users, but admins or especially people uh, considering the use of RPC might be interested in this. So you can return the vector features currently on the map, like programmatically, on the, on the viewport where the user is, and you can filter those with the attributes or, or geometry. You can use this over the RPC, so you can build something on top of that response or whatever you need to do with those features. Uh, another thing we added was that you can actually omit the get feature info uh, response, so you have your web map service data and the user clicks somewhere, you can select not to show that data on the embedded map, but actually handle that get feature info response on the parent web page if you want to kind of style it yourself or do something with that response. Uh, there's a new request for RPC, uh, metadata search request, so you can also curate the metadata over RPC. Uh, statistical maps, metadata, and, and user interface automation. Uh, we refactored a, a lot of the UI for showing metadata uh, in the statistical maps tool or thematic maps tool. And now we show dates and, uh, for the last and next update if that is available. And the biggest thing here is the automation for the user interface. So now we can automatically 
uh, create a nice looking thematic map or nice defaults for the thematic map. I think this picture will show it much nice, or this animation will show it much more nicely. So here I'm adding some data, regions in Finland, uh, statistics Finland, selecting some data, something that's uh, normalized and something that's not absolute values and, and not absolute values. Here I get that data. So when I have absolute values, I get gradual dot symbols. And when I have some relative data, I get a corp that's not by default. So that's, that's kind of fancy. And furthermore, I can, of course, change things in the map if I, if I like. Uh, 2.7, March this year. Uh, a big, big thing that we introduce is uh, map layer analytics functionality. Uh, we use it to gather anonymized data about the usage of, of map layers and especially errors or problems with using those. And there's an admin functionality where you can check what could be wrong and you can come back to those kind of situations where the user has been browsing and, and the exact location where the problem occurred. So you can look into it and react. And uh, there will be an animation about this as well. It will explain itself. Uh, another thing, we support localized names for uh, my places, so users own places that they may draw or click, and also user layer layers, so uploaded data can also be localized now for description and source field and the, and the name field. So if you have multilingual service, you can do that. Uh, a ton of React replacements for old jQuery implementations. That's what we do kind of for every release. We are getting rid of the old jQuery things. Here are the analytics for for map layer uh, map layers. So I can sort them. I don't know if you can see the text. I hope you can. But there's uh, total displays and, and failed displays. And here I open up one specific case and I open up the situation where it has happened and see what happens. And nothing good happens because it doesn't work. So something is probably wrong with that map layer. And you can then contact the contact person or do whatever you have to do to get things sorted out. 2.8 June this year. Uh, just before midsummer. Another big thing, last year I introduced the announcement functionality. Uh, we decided to do a kind of overhaul on the whole functionality and add uh, nice features on our, based on our own use cases and what we need. A uh, lot of things, maybe I will not read all of those in, in the interest of time. Uh, other things, there will be an animation, so I'll show that. Uh, my data was refactored using React, so the user's own data, uh, personal information, personal data, uh, uploaded data, etc., published maps, is now completely refactored using React. Uh, get capabilities code has been rewritten completely, but we still have to do some things to kind of react to those uh, things that we find out when we automatically update the get capabilities of, of services registered to that OSCR instance. Uh, initial theming support, of course, you could theme Oscari from the day one, but now we have kind of easier theming, and we are working on that as, as we speak, or at least next week when we're back in Finland. These are the announcements, and here am I, here, here I am uh, adding an, an uh, announcement. Uh, you can see the current, upcoming, and outdated announcements. I'm going to add a very simple banner style of announcement here. Now I'm checking uh, or selecting when it's going to be shown for the end users. So clickety click. Just uh, title only, nothing fancy. And I'm going to let the users know that there's a scheduled downtime tomorrow or actually today. But anyway, I type in my announcement. I put it in English because I made the demo in English. And there it is. And now I preview it just so it, I can see that it will show as I want it for the end users. Okay, one minute. What do I have left? Oh, perfect. Uh, what's next? So those were the versions we have released uh, since uh, Buenos Aires. Uh, the next release will be 2.9, obviously. Uh, probably it will be released, no promises, uh, late September or October. And some things that will be included uh, map publishing tool React Rewrite, uh, Rewrite has been started. Uh, it will take some time, but the first parts have been redone in, in React. Uh, a lot of improvements and bug fixes to the statistical 
maps tool, uh, maps tool and a uh, bunch of improvements in the time series tool as well. Uh, what's coming up later on, probably, is a user interface refresh, uh, something that we have been wanting to start <laughs> quite some time already, but now we actually have done some kind of preliminary work for that, and we will do it uh, within the community, though, so there will be a many organizations uh, involved and, and funding that thing. And I will not go through these because I'm running out of time, so probably you can read all of that yourself. So nice little things coming for the UI and it will look super nice in one year or so. That's it. Thank you.